Now at nine, more changes are coming to next semester's academic calendar. Why university officials think this will benefit students. Candy, costumes, and COVID-19? Halloween will be done a little bit differently this year. Tips from health officials and how to stay safe this weekend. And we're gonna be seeing cool and dry conditions for your Halloween weekend. From the heart of Ball State University, live from the Unified Media Newsroom, NewsLink Indiana starts right now. Ball State President Jeffrey Mearns announcing changes to the spring semester. Good evening, I'm Logan Salzbrenner. And I'm Lily Cedardall. NewsLink Indiana's Brittany Dobbins joins us in the studio tonight. Brittany, why is this change being made? Well, Lily and Logan, this announcement comes after the Office of the Provost and the Spring Academic Task Force received feedback from students saying this semester doesn't give them the chance to stop and retain the information they are being taught. It's been a... It's been a toll. This is how a Ball State junior describes his feelings towards having no breaks this fall semester. I can definitely tell a difference. It's definitely a, it's been a tougher semester for me in terms of just stress. I feel like it's a lot more work having like just back to back to back papers due and midterms. These feelings are why President Mearns decided to add these study days to the spring semester. University officials say on the study days, some professors may hold class to review old material, while other professors might have a different activity for the day. Officials also say there is flexibility in how professors choose to use this time. I know me personally. Having those extra days might really come in handy coming towards finals. President of the Student Government Association, Connor Sandburn, says these days are an effort to try and give students a break as well. I wouldn't say that it's the best thing we can do, but I'm grateful that we're able to even have these three days uh, where professors will take it easy on us and, and allow us to try and relax. Students are really looking forward to a week-long break and since we can't provide that for them this year we have to give them everything we can that we're allowed to. The main expectation of students is to stay on campus. After the video dropped Thursday morning, Sandburn says students had mixed feelings and concerns about the plan. But what it is important to is to share those concerns with the president and with his office and with those who are above me and that's exactly what I'll be doing in my next meeting with him. Now, university officials say they don't know exactly when these days will happen, but there's still some details that needs to be determined, but we will be sure to keep you updated on air and online. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Brittany. And looking statewide, Indiana set a new record today with the number of new COVID-19 cases as hospitalizations and infections spike. The Indiana State Department of Health recorded 3,649 new infections. This marks the first time Indiana has reached more than 3,000 positive COVID-19 cases in one day. Coming soon, Kroger won't be just a quick stop for groceries. Kroger Health announced yesterday COVID-19 antibodies will be available for customers. This makes Kroger the first U.S. retailer to offer quick tests. Tests will be taken by a finger prick blood sample. Results will be given in about 15 minutes and will cost $25. The rapid antibody test will be available at all Kroger clinics and pharmacies by the end of November. And Louisiana is now cleaning up all the damage left behind by Zeta. The storm made landfall as a Category 2 hurricane. Camila Bernal shows us how people are cleaning up. After hammering the Gulf Coast, Zeta made its way towards the Atlantic Ocean. Millions across the East Coast were under storm warnings as Zeta moved through Alabama, Georgia, and the Mid-Atlantic states, bringing heavy rain and damaging winds. We got a mess. We got a mess. By mid-morning Thursday, more than 2 million customers were without power in seven states, including more than a million in Georgia, where trees and power lines were snapped in half. Tree fell over our porch, uh, dented the fence. The real extent, we don't know yet. Meanwhile, people along the Gulf Coast woke up Thursday to missing roofs, flooded streets, and power outages. Zeta's wind gusts in some areas reported to reach up to 110 miles per hour. Winds strong enough to rip this barge loose. Son of a gun. Look at him. He's gone. He's gone. Man, we are so lucky. Zeta made landfall as a strong Category 2 hurricane Wednesday afternoon. The eye wall passing directly over New Orleans. In New Orleans, I'm Camila Burnout. Well, Lily, we also experienced both the wind and rain today. I know it's more chilly than anything. I had to throw on a flannel myself. I know. I walked right out of my apartment without a jacket on and had to turn right back around and get a jacket. Jordan, will we need a jacket for tomorrow? Actually, guys, 
uh, we might be expecting a jacket for tomorrow, but right now we're going to look at what's happening currently on the radar. We're seeing rain showers pushing out of our area uh, right now that we did experience throughout the day today. We'll be seeing temperatures right now across the state in the 40s, 47 in Muncie, 45 in Indianapolis, a little bit warmer to our north and west. And overnight tonight, temperatures will drop into the mid 30s for the low, and we will be expecting those temperatures in the morning as well. So you'll definitely need that jacket for early in the morning. U.S. Customs border officials and Department of Homeland Security announced a new milestone for the border wall. Officials gathered in Edinburgh, Texas, near the Texas and Mexico border to report the completion of the 400 miles of the wall. In the course of the project, President Trump administration filed 75 lawsuits to gain private land in Texas along this border. The wall was a key component of President Trump's campaign in 2016. His goal is to reach 450 miles by the end of 2020. At the event, one of President Trump's top border officials, Mark Morgan, said Twitter removed a tweet about the wall's effectiveness. Twitter has reversed this decision. Only five days to go before election 2020. This means that President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden are still on the campaign trail trying to draw in last minute votes. Melissa Rainey has the latest. Long lines and cold temperatures aren't holding voters back, as scenes like this are common around the country right now. More than 75 million Americans have reportedly already voted. That's more than half of the entire turnout in the 2016 election. This 101-year-old woman, proud to be part of that number. It just made me feel so good. And now I know I am somebody. Meanwhile, the presidential candidates are amping up the push for votes. President Donald Trump stopping in Arizona Wednesday to announce a new plan aimed at helping the Hispanic community. The American Dream Plan will bring more than two million new jobs to Hispanic communities. Former Vice President Joe Biden campaigning in his home state of Delaware Wednesday, criticizing the Trump administration's response to the COVID-19 pandemic and promising things would differ in a Biden White House. We'll let science drive our decisions. We will deal honestly with the American people and will never, ever, ever quit. Looking ahead to the weekend, former President Barack Obama will join Biden on the campaign trail in the key battleground state of Michigan on Saturday. It's their first joint campaign appearance this year. Trump also focusing on battleground states as election day closes in. He will be in Tampa, Florida and Fayetteville, North Carolina on Thursday. I'm Alyssa Rainey reporting. NewsLink Indiana is your election headquarters. Join us on election night Tuesday, November 3rd for a special one hour edition of Newslink Indiana from 9 to 10. We've got live coverage across Delaware County of local, state and national races. We'll also have in studio analysts. Again, that's Tuesday, November 3rd on Cardinal Vision and the Newslink Indiana Facebook page. Now let's announce it is increasing its prices. How much is going to come out of your pockets because of it next? Tara Konechny, News. With the Halloween right around the corner, we'll have tips from health officials to keep you and your family safe. Stay with us. Riding the bus is an easy thing to do. Last year, we carried 60,000 riders from the Ball State area. 50,000 of those were students. Anywhere you want to go, Mitz will take you there.
So I just moved in with his family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Welcome back. A combat veteran who has fought his to spend his entire life in Muncie is finally getting some much needed support. Zach Jones is in the newsroom to update you on this story. Good evening, Zach. Well, guys, just only a few weeks ago, Nathan Jones from Delaware County Veteran Services found out the terrible conditions Vietnam veteran John Holiday was living in. Holiday was living without water, sewage, and even power for at least two years after being robbed three times. The Muncie Health Department did decide to condemn his home, but Jones and the community have raised over $38,000 to build him a new one and get him back up on his feet. Joshua Brown also works for Delaware County Veteran Services and is currently helping construct the new house. That shouldn't exist in any community. Um, if people without running water, people without plumbing, electricity, not even be able to be, uh, meet their basic needs, that just should not exist. Construction started just at the beginning of the month, and walls are already starting to be put up. But there's something Brown wanted everyone to know. It has been the most inspiring thing to see, honestly. It's kind of faith in humanity restoring, especially in this year, 2020. There's been so many hardships, and uh, to see something like this has been great. So I just want to thank everyone who's been involved. The house is expected to be finished right before Thanksgiving, so Holiday will be spending his holidays in the comfort of his own new home. If you would like to help support John Holiday or veterans like him, you can call 765-747-7810 or visit Holiday's GoFundMe page named Vietnam Veteran Home Repairs. Live in the newsroom, Zach Jones, NewsLink, Indiana. Again, if you want to support John Holiday and other veterans like him, you can visit BallStateDaily.com. United Airlines will offer free COVID tests to passengers before flights. The airline is hoping the move will encourage more people to travel. United says it should essentially prove everyone on board is negative for COVID-19. The trial will start on November 16th, right before the usual hectic holiday travel season. Passengers should arrive three hours before their flight to get their rapid test results. For now, United will test passengers between Newark Airport in New Jersey and Heathrow Airport in England. And if you're heading out for Halloween, health experts are reminding you to stay safe. Officials are encouraging trick-or-treaters to wear a mask. However, a costume mask doesn't substitute for the masks we've all been wearing to slow the spread of the virus. You also want to make sure you're frequently washing your hands and practicing physical distancing. If you're giving out candy, you want to do the same things. Experts also recommended passing out candy outdoors and having a setup station available as a centralized loca location to hand out the candy. Some local health departments have gone as far to say trick-or-treating is too risky. Many of you have been binge watching Netflix during the pandemic. Well, here's a heads up. It's going to cost you a little more. Netflix announced plans to raise their prices for the standard and premium plans today. The standard plan will be $14 a month, a $1 increase. Premium subscriptions will be $2 increase, making the subscription $18 per month. The basic plan will stay the same, costing $9 a month. Well, today was a perfect day. Perfect Netflix weather with how rainy and cold it was. Jordan, is that weather going to go away or stay around? Hey, I've got good news for you. That weather will be going away, and we'll take a deeper look at that when we come back after the break. If I could go back and change it all. I would. I would. I think I'm gonna miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Or maybe it's just the little moments. I could go back. And I could go back and change it all. If I could go back. I would. But I can't. Today I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. Really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. 
Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! One in three adults has pre-diabetes. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother, yes. you, your football buddy, your football buddy, you, your plumber. Breathe right into your foot. Your plumber's masseuse. Yes. You, your dog walker, your cat jogger. With early diagnosis, pre-diabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Welcome back to News Link Indiana. Taking a look outside, it's looking a little more clear than it was earlier today. I know I had to pull out my umbrella and my rain boots. Jordan, am I going to be able to put those away? Actually, you will be able to put those away as soon as we get these rain showers right now pushing out of the area. As we can see on our radar right now, we zoom out and take a bigger look at that. Take a look at uh, Hurricane Zeta that is just now moving off of the east coast and over to our west, that colder air is pushing and drier air is pushing in from the north which is going to cool us down and dry us out quite a bit. Currently on campus we're sitting at 47 degrees with a bit of wind out of the north northeast as well. Across the state much of the same 47 in Muncie, 44 up in Fort Wayne and in Indianapolis you are sitting at 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Overnight tonight we're going to be seeing temperatures drop down into the 30s for the low we're going to see them slowly decline after 1 a.m. as well. Mostly cloudy skies through the day to, to through the night tonight as well. Tomorrow we're going to be seeing those temperatures rise back up into the 50s almost. We're going to start out very chilly though, so definitely we'll want that jacket early in the morning. 36 degrees, just a few degrees above freezing, so you'll want that jacket. But you can definitely shed that by the time we get later on into the afternoon. Over the weekend though, temperatures are going to stay pretty mild. 50 degrees for the high on Saturday. Winds coming out of the south about 5 to 10 miles an hour. Those sunny conditions as well. And then on Sunday, a cold front moves through. Those temperatures will decline through the entire day on Saturday. And, or on Sunday, and we're going to be seeing very breezy conditions associated with that cold front as well. Very gusty, those winds coming out of the west at 15 to, tw 15 to 20 miles an hour with those mostly cloudy skies. Over uh, the weekend, we're also going to be seeing Halloween. Here's our spot forecast for about 8 p.m. on Halloween, right around the time that you'd be out doing your trick-or-treating, trunk-or-treating, whatever safe Halloween holiday activities you have. You can expect conditions in the mid 40s with pretty clear conditions so you shouldn't have to worry about any of that weather impeding on those festivities for Halloween. Over the next six to ten days we're going to take a look at this from the Climate Prediction Center. The next six to ten days we're going to be expecting uh, a very high probability of above average temperatures after November 4th between November 4th and the 8th. And the only below average is up there in the Pacific Northwest. So we're going to be seeing those much warmer temperatures here. And we're going to take a look at that moving on to our seven, MITS seven day forecast. We're going to take a look at those in the end of the week. But let's start at the beginning here. On Halloween, those temperatures 50 degrees. On Sunday, that cold front moves through. Remember, temperatures decreasing throughout the day. So you'll want a jacket very breezy on Sunday as well. And then we dry out quite a bit through the rest of the week. We're going to be seeing those temperatures much sunnier. On election day, it should be great uh, to go out there and make sure you vote. It'll be a very sunny day as well on election day. And through the rest of the week, those temperatures up in the 60s, as we mentioned before, with that increasing uh, chance for probability of above average temperatures. It's really good to see the sun kind of coming back out after past couple rainy days. Yes, yep. Yeah, I'm sure all those trick-or-treaters will be really excited, and athletes too. I know some sports are coming back up. Thank you so much, Jordan. 
Coming up, high school football is gearing up for two rounds of sectionals. We'll have the latest update in full schedule for all teams in and around Delaware County. And legal action from a local high school team has brought positive growth. Find out how next in sports. Hey, did you know 2.4 million loving cats and dogs in shelters and rescues need our help to find a home? Let's go to the shelterpetproject.org and meet a few are in a shelter near you. Harlow, oh, she's one great listener and loves to hear all your stories. My kind of cat. Shrulo is a sweet, goofy boy who's eager to please. Sounds just like another dog I know. So go to the shelterpetproject.org, search your local shelters and rescues, and go for a cuddle with your next best friend. Adopt. Problems, the ones nobody talks about at cocktail parties. We go looking for them. No matter the obstacles, no matter the odds, we surround a community's most critical problems, and we fight. United Way fights for the health, education, and financial stability of every person in every community. Will you? It doesn't take a scientist to cure hunger or a fancy economist to create safe housing. It takes imagination, creativity, sweat equity. When I think of kids going to school hungry, hunger, homelessness, in this land of plenty, seriously? Come on, we could fix this. Help out or don't. The choice is yours. Weeknights, NewsLink Indiana brings you the news before you go to bed. But Friday mornings, you're waking up with Cardinal Weather. We've got the latest news headlines. Freezing temperatures have set in all the way down in Louisiana. One man dead after flooding in Venice, Italy. Up to the minute weather conditions. Cold temperatures are the story this morning. And of course, lots of fun. That's, it is not what funny. What on earth is happening I there? I feel sorry for the little guy. I've got my socks on. Weather. Annie with her curly hair, which is actually never curly. Join us Friday mornings at 8 on Facebook Live. Welcome back. I'm Vincent Martirano with sports. Yorktown Volleyball starting in an unconventional way, to say the least. And now they haven't lost a game. NewsLink Indiana's Madison Surface tells us about the Tigers' journey. It was a momentum. I think the rule didn't change. Um, but it still got people's attention, um, which I think was the goal. And, you know, at the end of the day, they were respectful of the decision standing as it was. And and we moved forward. A petition starting back in August by senior Ellie Stinson didn't go the Tigers way, but the star studded senior is not taking it as a loss. I learned that I could be an activist if I wanted to, you know, um, but I also learned how many people support the athletic just like Yorktown volleyball and then just athletes in general. Like. Not only have the Tigers been feeling the love, but also been able to learn from and overcome its struggle. I think it gave them just some, I don't know, maybe some gumption of like, even though we're in high school, we can have a voice and we can allow our voice to be heard in a respectful way. That bump in energy carrying Yorktown through an undefeated season naming them regional champs. I was super proud of our kids for how they played and the grit that they played with. Um, I think the fourth set being down 22, 24 and coming back and winning just says a lot about the character of our kids and our team and their will to win. I think ev with every win, we're just getting closer and closer together and just meshing more and more as a team. The Tigers roaring forward, taking it day by day. In Yorktown, Madison Surface, NewsLink Indiana. Yorktown's semi-state match will be at Jennings County at 6 o'clock Saturday evening against Providence. As round two of the IHSAA state tournament kicks off, local teams have been steamrolling and hitting their strides at the right moment as they try to make a run at a state championship. Each squad feeling they have what it takes to win it all, but this is the moment they have been waiting for. Let's take a look at some of the matchups we have coming up in the Delaware County area. We have the 9-2 Delta Eagles squaring off with the 2-8 Wayne Generals. Also, we have 4-6 Yorktown facing off against 4-4 Brebeuf Jesuit Preparatory. Next, the games in the surrounding counties. The 9-1 Eastbrook Panthers taking on the 7-2 Tipton Blue Devils. Next, 7-1 Monroe facing undefeated South Adams Starfires. And finally, we have the 4-5 Newcastle Trojans battling Connorsville, who is sitting at 2-6. 
All these games are scheduled for Friday, October 30th. They're set to start at 7 o'clock. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at NLI Sports for the latest live scoring updates and information. And finally, tonight, sports are officially back at Ball State. Just before the Halloween festivities begin, Ball State will be hosting the 2020 Cardinal Classic. The men's and women's cross country teams competing against Miami of Ohio and Ohio University. Women's will start at 3.30 and men's at 4.15. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm so excited that sports are back, especially with football coming back as well next week. I know, I think a lot of Cardinals are going to be really excited for the game on Wednesday, even though they can't attend, you know, everyone can watch online, and I think a lot of people are going to be really excited for that. Yeah, I'm really excited, I'm going to definitely watch it on TV, and of course, you can catch all of our highlights here on News Like Indiana, if you want to check it out, I'm definitely going to watch it as well. Absolutely, or we can watch it on the uh, show tomorrow at 8 a.m., Wake It Up with Cardinal Weather. Yeah, it's super exciting, I'm really excited for football season, and coming up, we're going to share anchor pick stories with you. And a final check out weather, stay with us. It was a momentum. I think the rule didn't. Hey, did you know 2.4 million loving cats and dogs and Now time for our anchor picks. The coronavirus has led many contactless purchases with the help of Amazon. Coca-Cola is now shifting its interface to what is called the touchless freestyle soda machines. The concept of the freestyle soda machine was introduced in 2009 in 17 countries, which Coca-Cola options were available to customers via a touchscreen interface. Since the pandemic, Amazon and Coca-Cola have developed a way to operate those machines via customers' smartphones. This so-called mobile pour does not require customers to download an app. The machines have QR codes that customers can scan to bring the user interface to the phone screen. As of today, more than 30,000 machines have the touchless capability. And who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. And apparently, they live in Wisconsin at a house in Milwaukee. The owners do a big Halloween display every single year, and this year, they decided to honor those 80s icons known for taking down demons. The Ghostbusters firehouse is there, plus Slimer coming out of a hot dog cart. And it also has a famous proton pack battle. A&J's Halloween house has been running for about 17 years now. They use the house to also raise money for an organization that helps kids in crisis called Pathfinders Milwaukee. Well, I don't know about you, that really gets me excited, especially for Halloween. I know when I was younger, I absolutely loved Halloween. It was my favorite holiday, and I know that I really loved trick-or-treating. In fact, I would trick-or-treat every single year and wear pretty much the same costume, always Princess Jasmine. See, I was the complete opposite. I always had my parents buying me different costumes every year because I was so indecisive. But yes, I hope the weather stays around for these trick-or-treaters. Uh, Jordan, what's it going to look like? Yeah, actually, we will be seeing weather definitely... Uh, it's going to be much better than what we've seen in most recent days. We've had temperatures in the 50s. Uh, we're going to be seeing temperatures in the 60s later this week. This Halloween, though, we're going to be expecting... ...and go out there, even with everything that's been going on. I don't know about you, Lily. Yes, I'm definitely excited to go out and for Halloween. There are a few Halloween events you can look at this weekend. The Woe Trunk Trick or Treat event will happen in Muncie. The first is on tonight the che from Cheekin Park from eight, 6 to 8. Another Trunk or Treat event will be held at City Hall from 5 to 8 tomorrow night. Trick or Treating and Dayville will run from 5.30 to 8 tomorrow in Yorktown. Trick or Treating will happen tomorrow night from eight to 6 to 8. We've got a list online at ballseatdaily.com. Yeah, that's super exciting. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm sure all those out there are looking forward to it as well. Just a reminder to really follow all of those health precaution steps. Really wear your mask, wash your hands, just take care of yourselves and those around you who are out there enjoying their Halloween. 
And that's all tonight for Newslink Indiana. Be sure to join us again tomorrow morning for our sister show, Waking Up with Cardinal Weather at 8, streaming live on their Facebook page. And for news anytime, anywhere, go to BallStateDaily.com. Have a great night.